Does it say record? Alright. Subway. <laughs> hey, sponsored by Subway. Do you remember what this means? Uh, how? Several of you in here I know because I already have you. Several of you in here I don't know because I don't get you until January. But I wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to see this today. Whether I have you in class now or next semester. And then... This is my six-period welding class, the professional group. Okay. And then Ms. Cole's class for math class from the high school. All right, middle schoolers. If you do not know who I am, I'm Mr. Beveridge. I teach the welding class. I teach the construction class. And I teach an agriculture science class all over here in this big building. Some of you have seen what your colleagues have been building in class. You guys will get a chance to do the same thing next semester. Plus hopefully build some other stuff. All right. Now, the reason you're here today, in my construction and my welding classes, I teach a unit on basic electricity. The welding students will tell you because they've already been through it. It's not that hard. It's teaching you how to change a light switch, or how to change an outlet, or how to wire a light for your bedroom. But the thing is, all of us depend on electricity. The problem is, when something goes wrong with electricity, you can't see it, you can't smell it, and you can't hear it most of the time. And as my welding kids know, you can go from being alive to not being alive that fast. These guys are here to show you some of the things that can go wrong. Now, before we start, a couple of terms that we're going to be using. You're going to hear them talk about voltage. You're going to hear them talk about amperage. And you're going to hear them talk, use this word transformer. We start with transformer first. The bucket that's setting up the bottom of the pole, right there, is called a transformer. Guys, electricity is magical. We can take electricity, a little bit of electricity, run it through a bucket like that. Inside that bucket is iron and wire. And we can make a lot more electricity. Or we can take a lot of electricity, like on the power lines out here, run it through that bucket, and give you just enough that you can plug it in the wall and run something. Okay. All right, so now voltage. Voltage. Think about voltage like a river. You have a mile wide river, the Mississippi. All that water running by is voltage. Has everybody got a picture? But if I take that mile wide river and I put it in a two inch hose, same amount of water. If I pointed it at you, I'd blow you away. Don't mind the cat, he's on his second life right now. All right. But if I pointed that hose at you, I'd blow you all away from the power of the water. That's inverted. Okay. Now, before they start, there will be exploding fruit balls. All right, eighth graders in science class, tell me, how much of you is water, a human being? About 70%. And you guys? High school math class? Electricity loves water. 
Mm -hmm. Electricity would much rather go through water than go through all this equipment. Keep that in mind while you're watching the demo. Here today to lead this, we've got Juan right here and his team. Hi, Juan. <laughs> Take it away. Yeah, my name is Juan Trevino. I'm a line worker for Exo Energy. I'm one of the two owners here. So these guys over here are part of my crew. Every day we work on high voltage uh, in town. We work at 7,200 volts around the whole field area. Everything's kind of spread out a bit. We work with uh, 13,200 volts, a little bit higher, just to get it out there a little ways, you know. Um, so, yeah, we just want to teach y'all kind of the, some of the basic stuff, kind of what you look for and to keep away from as well. Um, like I said, our bodies, you know, are made out of, what does it say, 70% water. You know, fruits are a little bit higher than that, but it'll show you what it'll do to your body. It'll, you know, if you make contact with electricity, with the, with the hyper voltage that we deal with, it'll put you from the inside out, blow, you know, pieces out, it gets pretty nasty. So we'll show y'all some of the stuff that we're doing that will come up in a bit but I just want to start off with showing y'all some of our equipment that we use. Main thing being our rubber gloves rated for the voltage that we work with uh, depending what we work with these are rated for 17,000 volts which is pretty plenty for what we work with uh, 7,200 and 13,200 volts you know so they're, they're rated plenty for that. We use um, leather protective covers, they're art rated, just in case, you know, because whenever something goes wrong, something fails, it's right there in front of you, you know, it's right there in your hand, so that's why they're art rated, so it won't burn, melt through your rubber as quick, it'll get that leather first, it's a protector. Of course, we always wear our hard hats, when we're out there on the primary, we just wear hard hats for the gloves. When we're on the ground, we're, we're dealing with certain uh, voltage, we'll, deal, we'll put the, our face shield on, we're a head mask. And then um, as apprentices, when we start off, start off, not just apprentices, but you know, leveling up, me as a phone, I still climb every once in a while. These are the hooks we use. Got that sharp hook right there at the end. Only about a quarter of an inch of that hook will be on that pole holding us up there. We don't use those spikes you see on the poles there. That's uh, that's old school stuff. We don't use those for the cable guys back in the day. We climb off here. We climb off these steel hooks right here. Where this leather belt we strap around the pole. That's how we stay up there. We're pretty safe. Uh, yeah, it's kind of some of the basic equipment that we use right here. But yeah, we'll climb 30 feet, 40 feet, anywhere you know and higher you know like we're saying any as as high as mother nature will grow a tree we'll climb it you know we can climb it with the equipment we'll provide it with they'll so we'll make a pull out of it and put wires on it we'll be up there fixing the line laying up wire tying in wire this is kind of our basic stuff you'll kind of see this on the trigger as well it's just insulators right here what keeps what holds the wire up there this is kind of the more basic stuff if you see this with the wire the wire sets on the wire will sit right there, different size wires, and it'll be tied on there at all times, you know. So that wire, if it comes, you know, if there's a windy day, it's not just gonna pop over. If it's tied on there, it's secured. Just some other equipment, blankets, rubber goods. This is what we use to put on the line. You can see it on that back line right there. That's just what we use to protect ourselves when we're putting that wire, staying in our buckets and our jibs are insulated, you know, as much insulation as we can put on there between that voltage and ourselves will do it. That's all we work. We insulate ourselves from that wire with the rubber gloves, with the rubber hoses. Um, at the at the voltage that we work on the distribution level, I think what is the anything below six sixteen what we consider distribution? Yeah some sixty nine. Everything, anything above 69 kV, 69,000 volts, it's a, a transmission voltage where we actually bond ourselves to it. It'll be a bucket insulated, the boom is insulated, but that box of that bucket will be uh, aluminum and you will bond yourself just like a bird on a wire. That's what you'll be up there to work on that higher voltage because you cannot insulate yourself. You can't wear a rubber glove big enough, you know, or thick enough so you can actually do work so we bond ourselves to it. And throughout our apprenticeship that we go through, our four-year apprenticeship, we uh, we do that. We, we are trained in transmission, but we don't work on it day to day. 
uh, we can you know we're 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 able to but we just don't we're just staying on distribution side we work the overhead and underground this is kind of you know it's, uh, this is an underground piece of an underground cable it's you we do run full primary voltage 7200 volts through it that's buried at about five to six feet underground your residential stuff it's a little bit it's a little bit higher it will not higher but it's not buried as much it's probably about you know three feet a couple feet down so that's why it's important to call 811 before you dig you know you can take just as much as sticking that shovel in that ground you'll you'll go right through a buried line and that's a big no-no you know you'll burn that shovel up you might hurt yourself electricity will go right through you you, you never know what will happen so something to keep in mind at all times so that's pretty much it for now basic stuff um we're gonna head, go ahead and start burning some stuff some fruit hmm. we'll start off with an apple real quick kind of show y'all what it'll do what this machine does I want to sit down so bad now. Hey, you got going out on the high side. It's secure, man. It is not a straight direct ball that, that is hard. It is just load. That load is be, it's about almost 50 amps of load. You know, it's not much. The higher the voltage, the lower that amp goes down. So we kind of get an idea of what it does.
I bet that's an electric one. Yeah, yeah. Tonyo, Tonyo. I love you, bro. Love you, bro. Yes, I do. I remember I gave you that one time when I took you. Yeah. 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 It's an orange. That's an orange. That is an orange. That's an orange. I swear that's an orange. <laughs> I told you, Brian. They have so many I don't want to get my <laughs> uh, <laughs> pickles. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, then when we get in that cab, like, I just do the best ride on the car line. Hey, you know that cat's name, right? That cat's name is, uh... Captain. Captain? Oh, no! I don't need to just let it happen. Oh, no. Oh, that was cool. Oh, dude, I can tell. Bro, is that like a bar? No, Oh my eyes. Oh. Tony. I got three burgers done right now. I'm sorry, I'm done. Oh, they always have a big old box. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat it. This is boring. I got the trouble. You're like, what? I'm not gonna eat it though. That was like one of the days. Don't touch me first. Hey, you touch me first. I Some people, you like, you know how they cook steak and shit and they like to cook juicy? Oh, fuck it. Bro, well, there's three left and then I got four on the grill right now. What do I look like to you, huh? I don't know, bro. You got two legs and shit. A kid that had surgery on his leg. Recess. Oh, Michael, get Blake on. Blake, don't scare me. That's Blake, my cousin. He doesn't don't scare, scare you? Whoop his ass, Zay. Whoop his ass. Hey, Blake, don't scare you. Bro, oh, hop off my cousin, bro. Ain't a wall. Oh, that was red. Oh, you bitch. I think we just have to be 
<laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? 